Greetings everyone and welcome to a video tutorial where I'm going to teach you how to analyze a chess position from strategy point of view and how to make more effective decisions. You can pause the video before you listen to my thoughts and make up your own opinion about this position. What would you play and why? It is why to play. The first thing that I do in a position is I look at the tactics. So I scan the board for all kinds of tactical possibilities which do not exist over here. And then I start observing the position, observing the advantages that both players have in order to set a strategic goal. What I see is that white right now has two pawns that win space for them. And a result of that is that the black's dark square bishop is currently passive. One could think that it's not very logical that the light square pawns are restricting the dark square bishop. However, we're restricting the square d5, which is preventing the black's dark square pawn on d6 from moving forward and this way freeing up the bishop. You could imagine if this bishop was, for example, on a square d6 or c5 safely placed, then the bishop would be much more active than currently it is. Another thing that the space advantage over here provides us is with opportunities of moving more pieces to the wings more freely. So if we had some kind of target on the queen side in the black's position, we could do a queen side attack. However, here the e4 pawn provides us with more room to move pieces towards the black's king. So the ramification or the consequence of these two pawns e4e4 is that the black's dark square bishop is currently passive or I would also say that white has the superiority of the minor pieces. The knight plus bishop here for white is stronger than the placement of the black's bishop and the knight. Another thing that we have as we have discussed is potential to build up king side attack due to the chances of moving the army there more freely. White has also problems with the development currently. It's not a long lasting problem, but we gotta get those pieces out. So my strategic objective or my strategic plan here would be to develop my pieces while I would be attempting of keeping the black's dark square bishop there, or at least the superiority of the minor pieces and building up the king side attack. So a move like knight d5, which was suggested by some of my students, is a disastrous move because it just allows black to solve their problems. For example, knight takes d5, say you take with the e pawn, and after bishop f6, white has zero advantage, I pick black. There's no chance of hitting the black's king anymore in this game, and black has solved one of the main issues that they've had in the position, which is dark square bishop. Move like bishop g5, which also would be inaccurate because after h6, if you take black, solve their problem, and if you retreat, there's queen g4, for example, followed by knight h5. And you could quickly see that the black's dark square bishop is going to get to this beautiful diagonal while the knight is going to be swapped for the dark square bishop of white. So there are quite a few ways that you could play this position. For example, f3, bishop e3 is making sense. Perhaps bishop f4 and the game b3 was played. Now, if black is attempting in this position to solve the issues with, say, knight g4, then white has knight to d5 over here. And if in this position you go bishop f6, you are solving the problem of the dark square bishop by exchanging that, but white still holds the superiority of the minor pieces. White's dark square bishop is a much more powerful piece looking at the g7 square all the time, looking at the long diagonal, and is much better than the knight on f6. White holds big advantage here. In the game, rook fe8 was played, and white is developing pieces while potentially keeping the chances of attacking the black's king. And from here on, what black probably should have played is tried creating counterplay with a move like b5. One of the qualities that best players in the world have, and I would even say more advanced players have all the time, is versatility. So while white's main plan or advantages were the bad dark square bishop of blacks and the weak king, we have to be looking for alternative plans and be accustomed to the changing environment. So for example here, white has a very strong move knight d5 applying pressure on the knight, and after I guess black is kind of forced strategically to trade off. We have c takes d5 and subsequently we can start playing against the weak pawn on c7. So even though we had this attack against the black's king, now we see an open file with the backward pawn which we can apply pressure against. So this versatility in terms of plans is very very important for all chess players who want to get better. Instead black played passively in this game. White moves king g h1 to free up the g1 square for the rook. Transitioning the pieces to the king side and soon launching a deadly attack. You could double up on the g file 
you could see the amount of the pieces of wise that are looking at the black king is simply overwhelming and soon we're gonna open it up last comment that i would like to make is that many people are afraid of playing moves like g4 conditions are absolutely conducive to such move and there is zero vulnerability for the white's king because white has the superiority of the center there is no way that the black's pieces currently can come closer to the white's king so the likeliest result is that both kings are going to get opened but only black's king will be vulnerable due to the white's potential to move pieces to attack and actually check the king if you enjoy what i'm doing consider hiring me as your personal online chess coach my contacts are on the screen thank you for watching and i will see you in the next lesson